Well, he's called San Diego and Ukraine home, and when the war broke out, he knew where he needed to be. Ukraine Freedom Project Stephen Moore joins us this morning, and thank you for being here. Great to be with you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, okay, so the war breaks out. You have been on the front lines. Being there and knowing what to expect, how does that, I mean, what, when you come back and you're sitting here with us, what can you actually say? Uh, it's much more pleasant to be in San Diego. Yeah. Um, but, you know, what people don't realize is that most of Ukraine is functioning rather normally. If I could magically transport you to Kyiv right now, mm. you would have trouble figuring out there's a war going on. And, um, but that being said, where it's bad, it's really bad, like as bad as you can imagine. Uh, the Russians, the places where the Russians are occupying the front, uh, the Russians are committing war crimes. They're that are you know, they're um, doing terrible things to women, terrible things to children. Uh, they're kidnapping tens of thousands of children. So you know, it's a horrible medieval war. But fortunately, most of Ukraine has gotten back to normal. Um, Ukraine has taken back more than half of the territory it lost to the Russians. So, um, so you know, it's just something that, that uh, doesn't make it back on, on most of the news. Uh, we'll get to the um, Freedom Project, Stephen, in, in just a moment. But when the war first broke out, the images and the video that we're seeing were just absolutely horrifying. Uh, can you believe that it's lasted this long? You know, I think that um, when you think about the timeline that we're looking at now, compare that to the timeline that we saw at the beginning of the war, which everyone in the world, including mm -hmm. me, thought that the Russians would roll through Ukraine in three weeks. So, you know, can I believe that it's lasted this long? No. I thought it was going to. I thought you know the Russians were going to take over Ukraine in in three weeks. So so I think this is uh, an amazing testament to the courage and the motivation uh, of people. Um, there's people like you and me. There's actually news anchors that are now fighting at the front. I know them. I've met them. So people like you and me. I work with um, auto mechanics. I work with uh, PR people. I work with um, um, lawyers and uh, and normal people, you, normal Ukrainians with jobs like yours and mine, who are now fighting at the front. So um, these are people that have done a lot with very little. And you're saying that uh, things have kind of gotten back to normal in, in Kyiv specifically, in Kyiv, yeah. but there is still a war happening. There's still a need. Oh yeah. You were saying that Russian artillery. I mean, it's it's 12 to one compared to the Ukrainian forces. Yeah, yeah. It is. Um, the Russians are poorly trained. They're poorly motivated. They're poorly led. But there's a lot of them. Mm. And uh, the Ukrainians have done an amazing job. They've taken out a large amount of that that artillery. It used to be 20 to one. Mm. And so uh, they're doing a really good job. Uh, the Russians are now having to pull out World War II era equipment, World War II era tanks. Uh, to fight the Ukrainians because they've lost so much stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, but there's just a lot of Russians. The Soviet Union had a lot of stuff and they're pulling it all out of mothballs. Mm. So, David, I'm, I'm from, my family's from Iran, and it's very difficult to watch conflict on the other side mm. of the world when you're over here. Yeah. Uh, you got involved, you're there to help, you have this project, you're, you're raising money. What does this mean to you? Why, why get involved in this? You know, this is, the Ukraine war is, I think, a defining moment of our generation, and I want to be a part of it. And if the Russians had rolled through Ukraine in three weeks like everyone thought they would, then we wouldn't be talking about the war in Ukraine. We'd be talking about the war in Taiwan uh, and around the world because um, Xi Jinping and other dictators would be emboldened. They say, well, Putin got away with that. Three weeks, he rolled through Ukraine. You know, I'll take Taiwan. What a deal. And similarly, if the coalition supporting Ukraine dissolves after 18 months or two years, um, Xi Jinping's looking at that and he's saying, you know, again, I can make that deal. All I got to do is invade Taiwan and wait two years for the world to forget about it. I can make that yeah, deal. So much of what happens and what the outcome of this and what could have happened 
will have a tremendous impact on, on history and what happens uh, to many countries around the world. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, and if you look at the, the people lining up behind the terrible things that Russia is doing, you know, the Iranians are sending drones over there. And the drones, I mean, I, I got a call last night from, from one of my friends in Kiev, and she said, um, you know, we just had a drone strike. It was really close to my apartment. Mm. And, um, you know, the Iranians are making these $20,000 drones, uh, and, and there's people brave Ukrainians up on top of rooftops with machine guns shooting them down. I, I want to make sure that we mention this because you wrote an op-ed in the Washington Examiner uh, a few months back. Yeah. And you were saying that obviously there is there is criticism over the spending, with the spending that's being uh, sent to Ukraine from the U.S. And you're saying, eh, but there's still a need. Well, it's and not it's not just a need. This is a great deal for taxpayers. And let me tell you why. We spend every year on the order of eight hundred billion dollars with the US Department of Defense. And if you look at the weapons we we're sending to Ukraine, that's about forty eight billion dollars. And uh, the UK Ministry of Defense recently estimated that Vladimir Putin's war fighting capability has been degraded by half. So We've been spending $800 billion a year for decades to deter Russia. And for a fraction of that cost, $48 billion, um, the Ukrainians have taken the second most powerful military in the world and made it the second most powerful military in Ukraine. And not one U.S. soldier has had to die. Mm. People want to help. And yeah. they want to help what you what you do. A lot of people will feel helpless. They're, they're sitting over. We've seen the Ukrainian community here, too, in, in San Diego. Uh, come together to want to help. How do they do that? Well, uh, UkraineFreedomProject.org. Just go to my website, Ukraine Freedom Project. Google it. Uh, you can see what we've been doing. Uh, you can see where to give. San Diegans um, have been generous. Uh, we've gotten a big chunk of donations for San Diego. Greg Morrow, who's got a, is a prominent San Diegan, sent a bunch of clothes and jackets over there. Um, we've had a San Diego school district send computers. Uh, my parents, Ed and Linda Saros, uh, have been fabulously supportive. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, so, you know, we've got a bunch of San Diegans, San Diegans that have been generous in lining up and sending stuff over there. I'd welcome more. When do you go back? I go back on the 23rd. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so that's next week? <laughs> yeah, I think. Yes. Is about? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Okay. Oh my goodness, uh, Stephen! Thank you so much for Be your safe. insight. Be safe thank on you. your travels thank you. and, and keep us updated on what happens. Absolutely. All Thanks right. for this. Good to meet you. Yeah. Thank you. you. All right, seven twenty-four. Fox Seven Morning News. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back.